Hello everybody. I have a Coco 1 that I need to work on. And this poor Coco 2. And a Coco 3. So if you've watched my channel, you know that one of the things I absolutely love to do when I work on a new machine is to make a diagnostic cartridge for it. This one is for the Atari 8-bit computers. I've got this one programmed for the XE. Uh, this is for the Commodore 64. We've got a dead test and a diagnostic cartridge. And one of the things I love about these things is a lot of times when you get an old computer, you don't know if the floppy drive is going to work. You don't know what's going to work. Um, and this isn't going to give you every last bit of information about the computer, but it is able to give you a quick test and kind of start pointing it in the right direction. It's a good way to test the keyboard and the sound and uh, the overall RAM. And, uh, you know, honestly, it gives it a thorough enough RAM test that you can kind of help yourself out. You don't want to have uh, some bad RAM up in upper memory and not run into it until you play a certain game. At least give it that preliminary RAM test to see if everything is looking good. So I have to give a shout out to PCB Way for sponsoring this video. Uh, they help me keep these computers alive and uh, I'm about to order some more PCBs. So I just wanted to see, I added 10 of these to my cart and 10 of these to my cart and 10 of these to my cart and 10 of another cartridge to my cart. And I threw them all in there and I selected my home address and shipped and everything. I can get them all to my door for $31 or 43 if I want to use DHL and get it in two to four days. Um, and so that's absolutely absolutely incredible. PCB Way keeps the maker community alive. They keep these computers alive. They keep this channel alive. And uh, I just want to thank them for sponsoring this video and encourage you to, to take these things, get a bunch of them. You can sit there and you don't have to just do diagnostics. You can throw games on these things. You can give them away. You can sell them on eBay. You can do whatever you want because PCB Way makes this stuff cheap and attainable. Thanks, PCB Way. So this project is super simple. It needs a couple of header pins. You need six over here and two over here. It needs a single one microfarad capacitor and an EEPROM. I'm gonna recommend a 27C512, but really you can use uh, anything smaller than that if you want. And so what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna not only make a diagnostic ROM cartridge, which I haven't actually seen anybody put this together and uh, make a diagnostic ROM, but we're also gonna make it a little bit of a multi-cart and I'm gonna throw a couple of other Easter eggs on there if you wanna fiddle with the jumpers. Uh, so we're gonna get our jumpers, our capacitor and our EEPROM together and we're gonna start soldering. And once you are done, you are left with something like that. And I've got an EEPROM. I've shown you many, many times how to burn an EEPROM on the channel. I'm going to give you, uh, I'm going to give you the bin file, and I will also post a link to the description of my review of a bunch of EEPROM programmers. And uh, I think there's a clear winner out there, and uh, most of you seem to agree. Uh, so once you get that, you're just going to pop the EEPROM in here, and you are going to set the jumpers both to the right when you're holding it like I am. You want them both that away. And then you're going to put a jumper on here so the thing auto boots. Now, if you want to fiddle around with the other things that are on this ROM, all you have to do is start putting the things in different positions and you will find yourself with other ROMs. Now, because I'm going to use this just as a diagnostic cartridge, I'm going to go ahead and put it in a cartridge shell that I 3D printed myself. Um, so the way this works, you want to drop it in like so with the chip facing you. One of the nice things about doing it this way is that it prevents you from accidentally putting the thing in upside down. There's no little notch on here, so it'd be easy to do if you're not paying attention. So you're going to do that and you're going to put the other side of it on here and you kind of snap it together and this one actually stays together pretty dang well uh, even without the screw I'm gonna get it lined up here and uh, there you go something like the cartridge actually does stay together um, I'm here in the States so I'm gonna use a number six by half inch or five eighths inch screw uh, it looks like an M4 to me M4 maybe eight ten somewhere in that range this screw is actually a little long for this thing uh, but we're gonna screw it in there and I think this type of screw looks really nice we're gonna get that lined up so I think that looks really nice in there and in fact so much so that I've made a second one here that um, I'm gonna give some of these away uh, to some friends and that's one of the coolest things about PCB way man just get a bunch of these things and uh, have a little build party and everybody takes them 
So let's go ahead and grab a computer and see what happens. All right, so I've got a jumbled mess of wires over here. I'm just slapping together a composite uh, set of running through a converter. So the video quality is going to look like crap, um, but we're gonna go ahead and plug this thing in anyway and see what it does. So let's put it in. And as you can see, we boot right up to the diagnostic test uh, version 2.0. Now I will include the manual with this. And uh, this, these first two tests are kind of funny. Uh, so we're gonna do the basic ROM and you're gonna see it's gonna go through there and it's gonna do a, a CRC checksum. And it's just gonna give you the checksum of your basic ROM. And they tell you to contact your Radio Shack dealer to find out what it should be. So if I can find a list of what all the checksum should be, then uh, we'll go ahead and, and uh, post those, but I'm guessing because a lot of these things have been upgraded, uh, you're just going to be able to check to see uh, if it's consistent. So you saw mine. Um, now the next one is also kind of interesting. This uh, RAM data test, and there's a long and a short version of this, and it basically says that it's going to take, uh, you know, they developed this thing when the Cocos just had 4K of RAM, and that would take 40 seconds. Uh, to do 16K of RAM, they said it would take four minutes. And uh, this is 128K of RAM, so we're not gonna sit here and do all that. And then the second RAM test can take four hours. So it is a torture test of a, uh, let me say that again, four hours for a 16K machine. And so, uh, yeah, that's a little wild, but it's gonna go through there. And when it's done, it will actually say memory test okay. Uh, so we're just gonna go ahead and reset the machine and uh, go on to the next test. So this is a little bit more involved testing than I was expecting. Uh, we'll do a video test here. And what it's saying is that you're looking for the, uh, the smiley faces to not be the same color. So it wants you to check and make sure that they're all the same size and color. And if uh, some of them are different on the screen, then that's telling you that you have issues with your video or your vid video memory. Uh, we're gonna run a sound test. I'm not actually gonna be able to hear that uh, here on my computer. So I might not even put that in the video. And then uh, finally, we'll do a keyboard test. Well, not finally, we'll do a keyboard test here. As you start pressing, you can see that it's filling the entire screen up. If you do space, it'll tell you space. If you do control, it'll do this. So there's just different things like that. I honestly don't remember how to clear out of it. Uh, maybe break. Uh, yeah, there we go. And then finally, we've got a joystick test. Oh, I should tell you, the, um, the cassette test, you obviously need a cassette hooked up to a printer. You need a printer hooked up to it. The RS-232, I think it'd be pretty easy to make a dongle. You just have to short a couple of pins together on the uh, serial port. But we're not going to do that right now. We're going to go to the joystick test. And uh, it can tell that we've got two joysticks set up here. And so it shows things moving. I can hold the button. If I hold the button down, then it uh, shows movement. Uh, as you can see, we are getting a little bit of artifacting over here. So I don't know if that's a problem with the joystick, maybe a little bit of ghost input, um, but they are working. So that's a good thing. Uh, I got these used at a show this weekend. So first time testing those out. So that is the basics of the Coco diagnostic cartridge. You can let it run some RAM tests. You can just get a quick check on your system, make sure that everything looks good. I want to thank PCBWay for sponsoring this video and uh, I hope you have a great day.